The second gen Volvo XC60 has been given a facelift. What changed? How do you fancy 455 horsepower and adjustable suspension? Not adaptive, adjustable. Curious? Keep on watching. This episode is brought to you by Carvago. Be smart, choose your car online with Carvago. This is the XC60 T8 Recharge Polestar Engineered, hence the sporty wheels, brakes and all-ins adjustable suspension. I'm used to having some sort of sporty setting for the adaptive suspension, but here I can literally adjust it myself to suit my needs. And chances are I'd have it done once by someone who's more qualified than me and then leave it alone, perhaps mention it to that mate who's making fun of my 2-liter engine. More about that later. What's changed after the facelift? In the front, there is a bigger grille, and in the back, the exhaust is now hidden under the bumper. The pre-facelift cars had exposed exhaust tips even on PHEV models. And now, there are only black bits of trim around the corners. At least, it doesn't pretend to have fake tips. Under the bonnet is indeed only a 2-liter engine. Some 10 years ago, Volvo announced the SPA platform cars, meaning from S60 upwards, will get four-cylinder two-liter engines and that's that. But this engine alone can produce more than 300 horsepower and adding an electric motor to the mix turns this family SUV into a 455 horsepower monster. The T8 is the more powerful of the two XC60 PHEVs with the T6 putting out only 350 horsepower but even the T6 is quicker and more powerful than the BMW X3 xDrive 30e and the Lexus NX 450h+. The Volvo also has the longest real-life range of the bunch. Looking for a car for family, fun or work? Carvago.com is the place for you. Carvago is a modern platform with vetted cars from all over Europe. You can buy a car from the comfort of your home and Carvago will deliver it to your doorstep. Carvago.com features more than 700,000 cars from vetted dealers across Europe. You select a car on Carvago, Carvago sends out its experts and presents you with Car Audit, a full report on the actual condition of the car. Car Audit keeps track of 270 technical points, includes photos as well as final evaluation by a Carvago certified technician. Next, you simply select financing and delivery options, you sign a deal with Carvago and Carvago buys the vetted car for you. You have 14 days after delivery to test drive and return the car without giving a reason. The price also includes up to 12 months warranty depending on the region. So, what's your car from Carvago going to be like? The boot has 468 liters, including the 18 liters of underfloor storage. You can stuff your charging cable in there. And further on, there is some space around the rear mounted battery deeper inside the boot, but forget about fitting the cargo cover in there. The Lexus NX has a larger boot, the BMW X3 has a smaller boot, and the X3 has a silly hump from which things can drop and fall out of the boot as you open it. Volvo also has a small drop, so be careful when opening the tailgate. The boot can be opened and closed with gesture. There is also a button to shut the tailgate and lock the car. In the back, not much has changed. There is still good legroom and headroom. I'm 175 centimeters tall and the driver's seat is set to my driving position. However, I can even fit behind a fully pushed back passenger seat. There is a large tunnel running through the middle. Cars without the optional four-zone climate control get air vents only on B pillars. Door pockets are small, so you're left with cup holders in the armrest. And in the pre-facelift model, there was a smartphone cubby in the armrest. Perhaps Volvo decided to get rid of it for safety reasons, as in case of an accident, items could fly to the front and hurt someone. But then, what about the drinks? Mobile devices fit under the seats and you can charge them from one of the two USB-C ports. Here you also get the optional integrated booster seat for children older than three who are big enough not to need child seats. The backrest splits 60-40 and the ski hatch can be opened only from the boot side, so if you want to grab something from the inside, you have to make a pit stop. Doors cover the sills.
At first glance, the cockpit looks the same as in the pre-facelift model. However, there is now a wireless charger and that's too small. Gone is the CD player from under the armrest, so now the storage is just small but not tiny. And there are two USB-C ports there. The biggest change, and that's for all Volvo cars since 2021, is the introduction of Android Automotive. I've experienced two different implementations, one in the Volvo XC40 Recharge EV and the other one in the Renault Megane E-Tech EV. Android Automotive should be a great solution, but so far I have mixed feelings. Once you sync the car with your Google account, the infotainment has access to your history, which is especially useful when planning routes. Theoretically, you don't have to use the phone because everything should be available on the car's screen. Only it's not. For example, Volvo doesn't see and doesn't allow me to install my podcast app. Renault had some very basic version of Google Podcasts app, but there was another problem with it. I'm linking to the review in the description below. In the Volvo, I have to launch the media from my phone and then use the car's inbuilt media player. It seems like a minor issue, but what if I have a favorite music app, which I can't use seamlessly? The optional Boris and Wilkins sound system isn't cheap, you know? Google should at least work with its own apps. In the Renault, Android Automotive was the main system, but it was also possible to launch Android Auto. Volvo only allows Apple CarPlay. All the settings are on the central display, including drive modes, which require going into a sub-menu. How often are you going to change the drive mode, you ask? Well, by default, the car starts in regular hybrid mode, and if you want to take advantage of full zero emissions pure mode, you'll have to select it every time you start the car. And to start the car, you twist a knob rather than push a button and the gear selection is a double action because you can't just glide over neutral as you would in most cars. Here I'll just quickly mention the seats are very comfortable and the cockpit is um, let's just say if you like more space take the BMW X3 for a test drive before you decide to get the Volvo XC60. As this is an all-wheel drive car I'll start with my diagonal approach test where I stop halfway to put some strain on the all-wheel drive system with two opposite wheels having minimal or no traction. The first attempt is in regular hybrid mode. The car struggles a bit with initial approach, but that's just parking sensors trying to prevent me from hitting the hill. Then there's some hesitation, but the car gets moving again. Of course, it's dry and warm, so not the most challenging conditions. The second approach is in the off-road mode. There is no way to control the ESP, the system does everything automatically. This feels even easier. And the final approach is in permanent all-wheel drive mode. This mode is clearly designed for using on the road when the surface gets a bit slippery, but not necessarily to tackle off-road obstacles. The off-road mode works up to 40 km per hour, then the car defaults to permanent all-wheel drive. This makes sense, as having the off-road mode implies that you may still need extra traction. The next mode I tried out is the Polestar or Sport mode. In this mode, I first tested the acceleration, which, with launch control, is what the manufacturer claims, and that's 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.9 seconds. In regular hybrid mode, it's a bit over 5 seconds. In pure electric mode, pushing the accelerator harder launches the petrol engine. Let's continue with the Polestar mode in which the XC60 drives better than any Volvo I can remember. I revisited several of my older Volvo reviews and I always concluded that ride and handling are okay, but nothing spectacular. And there is nothing wrong with that because Volvo has advanced semi-autonomous driving capabilities, but it's also good to know Volvo has something to offer for those of us who do not want to nap behind the wheel. 
The steering is well weighed for electric assist anyway. The all-wheel drive system is proactive and I feel I'm being pushed out of the corners rather than dragged out of them. I didn't play with the suspension settings, but whoever set up this XC60 found the right balance between handling and comfort. The car doesn't roll too much in the corners, but it remains comfortable enough despite the 22-inch rims. The engine sounds good enough, and in recuperation mode you can even play with the gear shifts. I'm impressed. And then you reach the end of the twisty road, you enter the city, you compose yourself, adjust your tie and put the car in hybrid or pure mode. Now in pure electric mode Volvo claims this XC60 will do up to 79 kilometers. On a warm summer day I got low 70s and that's with some time spent in the car with the air conditioning on. That's a slightly better result than I got in the Lexus NX with a similar sized traction battery that's around 18 kilowatt hours. It's much better than the BMW X3 PHEV over there. The traction battery is about the size of what Volvo had before the facelift. Like the BMW, also the Volvo has a 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger. This means charging the XC60 to full from a wall box in about 3 to 5 hours. From an ordinary 230 volt socket, it'll take about 8 to 10 hours. As standard, Lexus comes with a less powerful 3.3 kilowatt onboard charger, but you can upgrade to a 6.6 kilowatt one. 70 kilometers is a solid daily commute, and with the main traction battery depleted, you can still drive in regular hybrid mode. On longer journeys, you will average 7 to 8 liters per 100 kilometers, which is on par with other 2 plus ton SUVs. Unless, of course, you choose to drive with the top speed, which Volvo electronically limits to 180 km per hour, then you'll consume much more petrol, but the Volvo XC60 has a 71-liter tank, regardless of the powertrain. And other powertrains include mild hybrid, petrols and diesels, front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Soundproofing is excellent. At higher speeds there is some tire noise, but wind and engine noises are well managed. Visibility is uh, average, which is where the driver aids come in. During my week with the XC60, I experienced the low speed collision avoiding systems a couple of times. So the car stopped dead in its tracks during reversing. It was very sudden and quite loud. So the first time I got out to see if I actually hit something or not. Also, one time the collision avoidance system uh, acted when I was turning left and it stopped me. The system is calibrated very aggressively. The oncoming car was also turning into their left, so we would have easily passed each other, but the XC60 acted nonetheless, which the driver in the car behind me found quite annoying, as they probably would have managed to get off the crossing behind me if I hadn't stopped for what seemed like no reason. At least the 360 camera is very good and the vertically mounted central display takes full advantage of the bird's eye view. Prices of the Volvo XC60 start at €52,200 for the front-wheel drive petrol and €57,100 for the front-wheel drive diesel. Plug-in hybrids start at €64,300. This test car is a Volvo XC60 Recharge T8 Polster engineered and with options it costs €92,610. I'm pleased PHEVs finally offer a sensible range for a daily commute. I think Volvo XC60 facelift is a successful one. And how do you like the refreshed Volvo XC60? Are there any PHEVs on your radar? What's the minimum electric range you want out of it? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.